For those watching on YouTube, here we go. We've heard half of the compilation, the first half, the first 15 tunes, and now we have the second lot of 15, and we're kicking off with Quadruple X Gold by Yoked. Yoked 2 has made some of my favourite tracks of the last few years, and they've been on these compilations as well, actually. Interesting enough, so maybe this will be another banger from him. Let's go. Oh dear. Shut the fuck up, you can't! <laughs> Take it up. Oh, he's gone for the slowdown. He's gone for the slowdown. Right. Yeah, that'll mate. Yeah, I mean, initially I was thinking, good yoked kind of sound, got a got a bit of that large tear out leaning kind of sound to it, without being quite the scope of like a a head flush, for example, one of his tracks from the past, which is exceptional. I fucking love that tune. It didn't quite, you know, have that that scale about it, but it did have the yoked kind of essence aesthetic and feel about it and I really enjoy how that uh, second drop just kind of transformed my feeling on it somewhat. Quite a few people are going for that slow down thing whether it's a, an odd profit or a, a YVM3 you know there are many who are doing it at the moment but he's gone down that avenue and I think he did it really well. All the sounds kind of stretched out leaving important gaps and whatnot and giving it that stuttered feel and approach quite glitchy. Yeah, I just think uh, just think he did it quite well. Next up, we have Butte Noise. We have Butte Noise. Let's get some love in the chat for Butte Noise. It's called Can't Deny. Let's go. Oh, it's classic. It's classic Butte Noise. Oh, yes. That's the kind of good musicality that I think his drop material has needed a little bit. That's really clever. There's a real attention to detail there when it comes to the note choice. That's that's telling a proper story, that. <sighs> People telling me to stand up. <laughs> We're gonna get a little rewind on that biatch. <laughs> oh, bless me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, just ticking most of, if not all, the boxes when it comes to Butte Noise's music and enjoying it generally. You know, got the whole tribal feel with the percussion and the synth usage. It's very finely done and delicate and just refined overall with uh, loads of colour and loads of just general on its feet energy and appeal to go with that. And I think especially good, this track from Butte Noise, because it feels like a levelling up when it comes to the concentration in the uh, in the musicality and the note direction with the main sound that we get in each drop, which is super important. A couple of moments in the second drop where it dipped a little bit and it was it dragged just a little bit. The energy dipped a little bit, but you know we're contrasting that with the mad energy that is happening elsewhere. The main vocal sample is very good. It's just another solid Butte Noise track and definitely one of the best on the compilation so far. Next up, we have Sub Doctor and Computer with Swag Dads. Oh. 
I like it in that it has a bit of a like a, an OG 2010s dubstep, modern dubstep kind of feel about it with the synth usage, but to go with that is always going to be percussion that just doesn't really hit and is a bit flat and um, they've got that on lock as well, unfortunately. It's just all around the heaviness just has a bit of a deflated feel to it. It just got a little bit of a laboured, lethargic feel to it, just kind of dragging along. I like the oozy sound, it's quite an oozy, worming sound of a lot of the synths we get in here, but it's just, I'm just trying to push some kind of more energy into it, you know? Just a fine collaboration, not too much to remark on there. I do like the length of it. I like just in, in itself the fact that people are making tracks that long with there being so many short ones in this scene in this for this kind of music at the moment. But yeah, I mean, not too much to remark on there uh, ideas wise. It, it snakes along in a nice way, the heaviness there. But um, yeah, just feeling a bit flat and deflated overall. Next up, we have Moly and Voxon with Tremble. Crikey. Yeah, again, just hardly anything to comment on there. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, that's all I can say, really. Uh, nice production, nice kind of direct feel about it, but yeah, not much to comment on beyond that. Next up, we have Rhythm Alarm. Rhythm Alarm by Zabor. Mmm, that Zabor flow. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Oi! <laughs> I mean, how to make quite a straightforward layout quite exciting and funny and, you know, bubbly just with a sound like that. It's keeping my attention for sure. It's almost got a bit of a Dr. P flavour about it, that sound. You know, that video gamey early 2010s feel with a bit of evil and menace just oozing out of it, you know. Lobbing in that nice little lasery sound, which, yeah, to be fair, a bit abrasive, a bit annoying on the ear. A little bit jarring, but at least, you know, providing some kind of energy and some kind of colour to a style that has just become, you know, quite turgid and bland for the most part over the years. So, um, yeah, I welcome that, even though it is a little bit grating on the ears. I think it's just, uh, uh, you know, realising that style of music in a different way, which is cool. And I like how the squeal became more of a kind of yoy sound as each drop went on. That was quite cool. I enjoyed that good vocal samples as well and great percussion. Next we have another collaboration, Chibs and Duffy with Spud. How did I get here? Where's the flavor and the life and the kind of excitement in Chibs' style gone? This feels like the colour's been sucked out of it almost completely. How did I... ah, it's just it's just a bit it's just a bit lifeless. Ooh, bit of bit of energy being injected into the drops here. Yeah, sorry guys, I just can't really help beat the feeling that as Chibs in the last, I don't know, few months to a year or so, has started putting out way more music. It just feels like the ideas have suffered resultantly. You know, he was in a good rhythm, late 2010s, 
early 2020s, so you know, a couple of years ago, an EP a year for Disciple, and all the ideas pretty much on those EPs just sick, you know, taking the time to craft those ideas, those concepts, those drops, with great vocal samples, good melodies as well. This just feels like, similarly to a lot of other tracks he's put out, again, in the last half year or so, it just seems like they've suffered as a result of him, you know, just releasing way more. Working to a lot more of a schedule now that he's touring a lot more and stuff like that. It just feels like the, um, yeah, kind of like the fun, the zip, the colour, the flashiness, the unpredictability has just been sucked out of his music somewhat. Hope he can get back to that more fun and exuberant point uh, consistently at some point soon. Next up, we have Toop by Loompa. Loompa! Skitty. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that hey 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 was that from um i know you want it do 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 i know you want it blurred lines blurred lines oh days that fucking horrific song that song can go in the bin Must have so much fun just putting tracks like this together. <laughs> Every time that comes in. What more can be said, really, about that? Next up, we have track number 23, Pike, who's been very hyped recently. Hey, hey, hey! Shut up, Robin, you bellend. Um, nothing to say about that. Just genuinely nothing to say about that. Squishy and Unit, the Booze Bandits. Nice little name. Another collaboration on the compilation. Let's get it. Are you happy now? Okay. Liking that percussion quite a bit. The introduction was pretty exciting and I was like, okay, I love the energy here, some clever stuff pretty attention grabbing and then all that energy all that build up is just like you know just plummets what is that snare you know what i actually don't mind the bass sounds they're they're quite they're really thick and juicy and meaty i like that Next up, another collaboration, and uh, hopefully one with a bit more just excitement to it. I imagine we will get that, Diatic and Wretched in collaboration, featuring Robbie Rosen on the edge. Let's get it. Ooh. These classic dyatic vocals, once again. Mm. Ooh. 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 Yes, some very good flows in there. When the first bit of heaviness came in, I was like, oh, just just wanted a little bit more, something a little bit more 
to like spice it up, perk it up a little bit, but the progression of each bit of heaviness. Da 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 da. And it's got this elephant like kind of trudging feel about it, which gives it this really big energy. Uh, like it's kind of bouldering and like, you know, moving really heavily across the tune. I'm a fan of that. Production's on point. Yeah, this bit where I'm just like. Whoa. Oh, but yes, yes. The way that each main drop just picks up, you know, I think they do both start off a little bit slow, if I'm being honest, if I'm being frank. Both for me a little bit like, you know, trudging a little bit, like wading through mud a little bit, just that little bit stuck where you're just like, I want to just inject that little bit more energy in there. But the way that each one picks up, my God, the first one with that da 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 and the second one that we just heard there, just uh, all stuff was kind of flying off in all directions with that second drop, the way it developed. Sensational. Really good as well to get that at that point in the compilation, just to just to give it a bit more energy as we're uh, edging towards the end here. Then we have another collaboration, this time Vampa and Chromatic with Astral Projection. <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> I'm just tired. I'm just. I'm just. Um, I'm just a bit tired. I don't know why this stuff is like amplified and given this like level of platform, if I'm being honest. This could be a start to finish 30 track uber creative dubstep compilation that is exciting for the whole thing. By having ideas that are going for practically the same thing and, and choosing that, you're essentially being like, no, I, I don't think there are 30 artists out there in the underground that could make a you know super exciting dubstep leaning kind of tune i don't think that's a thing i don't think that exists because you're actively choosing this kind of stuff over it next up we have dislocated by tracy DJ. Interesting track from Tracy, like a lot more contained, not as like large and in your face as usual from Tracy, you know? Okay, then then in with a bit of, bit of largeness to follow that up, okay. The ideas are fine, but I think the thing in itself of Tracy going down this route and having a more, you know, slightly muffled, uh, contained sound is just different for him. Trying out a different thing. Mm. Favourite thing about that, definitely the way that each drop, well, the track as it goes on through the drops just gets progressively more aggressive and loud and in your face, which is cool. That's a cool concept in itself. It is new for Tracy, executed pretty well. The ideas are a standard, straightforward, not doing all that much, quite a run-of-the-mill layout there. Uh, not that much change from one drop to another conceptually, but just, just gets progressively louder. And that is, um, that's a cool little technique and tactic in and of itself. Next up, we have, oh, can't see now, Nerve. Yay, Nerve. Track number 28, Sword Logic. Very good build, very good build. Here we go. Oh, it's a scything one, it's a cutting one. Ugh. 
Oh, it's attacking me. It's attacking me. These little oozy, ravey bits. Sensational, bellissimo. Oh, it's a slowdown. It's a slowdown. Pretty hell to skelter this one. Pretty manic. Not going to beat around the bush. Definitely heard Nerve make more enthralling and captivating ideas. I think there's an extent again with that tune to which uh, just towards the end, conceptually, with the heaviness we get, lose the steam a little bit where the idea is just kind of dragging just a little bit and you want something a little bit there just to just to spice it up towards the end. But very attacking, very attacking tune. The synth usage is really good. I think the percussion below, line below, is uh, thick and punchy, which uh, keeps your attention really well. So I think there's enough here mapped out across the tune to very much make it an engaging track, at least with the heaviness from start to finish. And then you've got those really nice oozy, ravey sounds in the interlude sections just to tie it up. That's really good. Uh, those, those bits uh, provide that charm, provide that naughty underground flavour. But yeah, the heaviness, just it just smacks really hard. That was a needed bit of energy, again, for the compilation at this point as we head towards the final couplet of the compilation. And first up we have Deuces, Deuces Bitch with Blade. This one is called Dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dive, dip and dodge. To be fair to it, for ones that are doing that straightforward idea, that straightforward approach, that kind of simple with the sound layout, at least cut really well and got like a, a bit of a bite to the production, which you've had with a couple on this compilation. Yeah, you know, pretty chunky, pretty chunky sound, but I have heard it before. I have heard this kind of thing just... <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It was needing a little bit more personality, a little bit more character, just something to make it stand out beyond the, to be fair, pretty chunky and well cut production. But it's got a fart in it. It had a fart in it. So that automatically elevates it to one of the best on the compilation for me. Next up, and finally, actually, on the compilation, we have Well On with It Was Nice. Everyone always talks about square four. What about square five? Huh? Just that kind of snare I, I can't Can't quite can't quite get on board. That final cut, again just not that much to say about it, if I'm being honest. Pretty plain and simple ideas, just bereft of a spark. Looking back over the compilation now, um, I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, just thinking about the good ones here, like the ones that I remember really uh, hitting me in an impactful way. I thought the graphite opener was pretty sick. I like the sharks. Also was a fan of the Mar 6. The yoked was decent, especially in the second half. Butte noise, definitely one of the best on the compilation, if not the best on the compilation. Olympus Kati, just funny as always. Hey, hey, hey. Also had the dyatic and wretched. Fantastic bit of energy towards the end there. And then the nerve was pretty alarming as well. Pretty uh, well, did smack me in the face a bit, but that is like, what are we talking about? Maybe, I don't know, six or seven from the 30 that I'm like, yeah, I, I would happily go back to those repeatedly and hear those again. The rest are just like, just 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 fine, really. Uh, fine kind of verging towards 
yeah, not not that great. Ridim and quarter notes and square four whatever is still where it's at. That is still what is selling. So I get that you want to make a lot of that. Well, make the compilation a lot of that kind of stuff. But um, I think you could easily with a compilation this size on this kind of label, which is massive and would give a lot of exposure to people who are fantastic and really, really deserve and warrant that kind of platform for the mad creativity they've got bound up in their music. I think that could be done for volume seven. I'm just saying, or whatever kind of future comp from Disciple, you know, maybe it takes a new one. But yeah, guys, there we go. There's my thoughts on Knights of the Round Table, volume six.